It's soup for supper time. This is actually the second time that I have tried to film a soup and uh, upload it for you guys. The first soup I made, all the files became corrupted. It did lots of terrible computery things um, to it, I guess. Uh, and yeah, it got destroyed, so I wasn't able to actually show you that soup. So I picked another soup out of this cookbook and we're going to try again. I have high hopes for this one, so let's keep our fingers crossed. We are going to be reviewing the 12 months of monastery soups. I am not going to try to pronounce that name because I will just butcher it, but you can see I only paid $3 for this book at Mr. K's used bookstore. And the cool thing about this cookbook is it is actually divided by months. So we are going to stick to January and I thought we would try this really good looking soup. You can see it's very simple to make. The only change I'm going to make is I don't have any white wine so I'm going to substitute some white wine vinegar but of course I'll be using a lot less than this one cup. Also you'll notice that it requires chicken stock or water. I'm going to be using chicken stock, but if you want to keep it vegetarian, go for the water. Now I've got everything I need to make this soup. What's really cool about this winter January soup is that it uses all kinds of really hearty, uh, winter hearty, I should say, root vegetables and of course cabbages. People used to store these kinds of vegetables in a root cellar for months at a time to keep them fortified until spring and they could finally put that garden in. So let's go ahead. We've got a lot of chopping to do and let's get started. That was a really strong onion, guys. <laughs> My eyes are burning right now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to power through that and we're going to put some oil in this pot, heat it up, and then saute our onion for about five minutes. Cabbage is chopped, potatoes are ready, and I think our onions are at the perfect stage of done. So we're gonna go ahead and add everything in here. I just hope that this Dutch oven is big enough to hold it all. <laughs> Alright, I did manage to get it all in there and of course it'll cook down, but we still have to add in our chicken stock and our vinegar. Now you can see we got all of our ingredients just barely in that Dutch oven, but we're gonna let that come to a boil and then we'll let it simmer down. In the meantime, I will show you what I was talking about when I said this book is divided by seasons. If you come to the contents, you'll see that you start in January and you work your way through the 12 months with all these different soups. I think this is a wonderful way to divide a cookbook, especially for people who are wanting to eat more seasonally. That way it's already been done for you. All you got to do is turn to the month that you're in and look through all the wonderful soups that you get to choose from. 
Now you will notice this cookbook does not have any pictures, but it does have these wonderful little illustrations and little quotes that I absolutely love. So there you go. If you are really into soups and you also want to eat seasonally, this cookbook may just be for you. I've had this simmering on the stove for a while now, so let's go in for the big reveal. Ooh, okay. We're looking good. I think this looks ready to eat. Let's go ahead and get a bowl and see how this is going to taste. Got my bowl, so let's go ahead. Now, I will say it's not the prettiest soup ever. Um, you know, you can see it's basically all one color. However, I do think that does reflect its more rustic winter feel to it for when you know, you're kind of going down to your root cellar and getting the last of your vegetables out in January uh, to see what you can scrounge up for a hot winter meal. So let's go ahead and try it and see if it holds up to that ideal. <laughs> It has a surprising depth of flavor, uh, given that the ingredients are just so simple, but surprisingly, it's really good. It's very comforting, very, uh, like I said, rustic on a really cold winter's day. It really hits the spot. Uh, we do have a little bit of snow still on the ground. It's steadily melting, um, but we did have snow for a couple of days. And this with the potatoes and the cabbage is just really, it's kind of what you would want on a really cold snowy day. Just something really filling, but still kind of like comfort food. I would also say, that this is a really good way to use up uh, a cabbage that you might find in your refrigerator that you forgot you had. I actually bought this cabbage uh, a few days ago and forgot that I had it in the crisper drawer. So this was great for me because I opened the refrigerator, found it, and thought, I need to use that up. And a soup is perfect. So... I would give this soup definitely a win. I think it's one that you might want to try. Now, would I try this in like June? No, probably not. But this time of year is absolutely perfect. So hope you try this soup and let me know in the comments if you liked it. And we will be having another month of soup for supper coming up. Let's keep our fingers crossed that I don't have any more technical difficulties with this and can actually get this video out because this is a really good soup that I think you would want to try, especially if you're in an area that gets cold weather. So thank you for watching this one and hope to see you in the next video. Bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, Here's two more videos you might enjoy, and make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.